A compound is a word composed of more than one free morpheme. The English language, like many others, uses compounds frequently. English compounds may be classified in several ways, such as the word classes or the semantic relationship of their components. Topic: <laughs> Compound nouns. Most English compound nouns are noun phrases, i.e. nominal phrases that include a noun modified by adjectives or noun adjuncts. Due to the English tendency towards conversion, the two classes are not always easily distinguished. Most English compound nouns that consist of more than two words can be constructed recursively by combining two words at a time. Combining science and fiction, and then combining the resulting compound with writer, for example, can construct the compound science fiction writer. Some compounds, such as salt and pepper or mother of pearl, cannot be constructed in this way. <laughs> Types of compound nouns Since English is a mostly analytic language, unlike most other Germanic languages, it creates compounds by concatenating words without case markers. As in other Germanic languages, the compounds may be arbitrarily long. However, this is obscured by the fact that the written representation of long compounds always contains spaces. Short compounds may be written in three different ways, which do not correspond to different pronunciations, however, the solid or closed forms in which two usually moderately short words appear together as one. Solid compounds most likely consist of short monosyllabic units that often have been established in the language for a long time. Examples are housewife, lawsuit, wallpaper, basketball. The hyphenated form in which two or more words are connected by a hyphen. Compounds that contain affixes, such as house build a and single mind ed ness, as well as adjective adjective compounds and verb verb compounds, such as blue green and freeze dried, are often hyphenated. Compounds that contain articles, prepositions or conjunctions, such as rent a cop, mother of pearl and salt and pepper, are also often hyphenated. The open or spaced form consisting of newer combinations of usually longer words, such as distance learning, player piano, lawn tennis, usage in the US and in the UK differs and often depends on the individual choice of the writer rather than on a hard and fast rule. Therefore, open, hyphenated, and closed forms may be encountered for the same compound noun, such as the triplets container ship, container ship, container ship, and particle board, particle board, particle board. In addition to this native English compounding, there is the classical type, which consists of words derived from Latin, as horticulture, and those of Greek origin, such as photography, the components of which are in bound form connected by connecting vowels, which are most often I and O in Latin and Greek respectively and cannot stand alone. <laughs> Analyzability transparency. In general, the meaning of a compound noun is a specialization of the meaning of its head. The modifier limits the meaning of the head. This is most obvious in descriptive compounds known as Karmadharaya compounds in the Sanskrit tradition, in which the modifier is used in an attributive or appositional manner. A blackboard is a particular kind of board, which is generally black, for instance. In determinative compounds, however, the relationship is not attributive. For example, a footstool is not a particular type of stool that is like a foot. Rather, it is a stool for one's foot or feet, it can be used for sitting on, but that is not its primary purpose. In a similar manner, an office manager is the manager of an office, an armchair is a chair with arms, and a raincoat is a coat against the rain. These relationships, which are expressed by prepositions in English, would be expressed by grammatical case in other languages. Compounds of this type are known as tatpurusha in the Sanskrit tradition. Both of the above types of compounds are called endocentric compounds because the semantic head is contained within the compound itself. A blackboard is a type of board, for example, and a footstool is a type of stool. However, in another common type of compound, the exocentric known as a bahuvri compound in the Sanskrit tradition, the semantic head is not explicitly expressed. A redhead, for example, is not a kind of head, but is a person with red hair. Similarly, a blockhead is also not a head, but a person with a head that is as hard and unreceptive as a block i.e. stupid. And a lion heart is not a type of heart, but a person with a heart like a lion in its bravery, courage, fearlessness, etc. 
Note in general the way to tell the two apart. Can you paraphrase the meaning of the compound x, y to a person, thing that is a y, or that does y, if y is a verb, with x having some unspecified connection? This is an endocentric compound. Can you paraphrase the meaning if the compound x, y to a person, thing that is with y, with x having some unspecified connection? This is an exocentric compound. Exocentric compounds occur more often in adjectives than nouns. A V8 car is a car with a V8 engine rather than a car that is a V8, and a $25 car is a car with a worth of $25, not a car that is $25. The compounds shown here are bare, but more commonly, a suffixal morpheme is added, such as ed. A two legged person is a person with two legs, and this is exocentric. On the other hand, endocentric adjectives are also frequently formed, using the suffixal morphemes ing or er, or. A people carrier is a clear endocentric determinative compound, it is a thing that is a carrier of people. The related adjective, car carrying, is also endocentric, it refers to an object which is a carrying thing, or equivalently, which does carry. These types account for most compound nouns, but there are other, rarer types as well. Coordinative, copulative or deviant compounds combine elements with a similar meaning, and the compound meaning may be a generalization instead of a specialization. Bosnia-Herzegovina, for example, is the combined area of Bosnia and Herzegovina, but a fighter bomber is an aircraft that is both a fighter and a bomber. Iterative or amredita compounds repeat a single element, to express repetition or as an emphasis. Day by day and gogo are examples of this type of compound, which has more than one head. Analyzability may be further limited by cranberry morphemes and semantic changes. For instance, the word butterfly, commonly thought to be a metathesis for flutter by, which the bugs do, is actually based on an old wives' tale that butterflies are small witches that steal butter from window sills. Cranberry is a part translation from Low German, which is why we cannot recognize the element cran from the Low German cran or croon, crane. The ladybird or ladybug was named after the Christian expression, Our Lady, the Virgin Mary. In the case of verb plus noun compounds, the noun may be either the subject or the object of the verb. In Playboy, for example, the noun is the subject of the verb, the boy plays, whereas it is the object in Cal Girl, someone calls the girl. <laughs> <laughs> Sound patterns Stress patterns may distinguish a compound word from a noun phrase consisting of the same component words. For example, a black board, adjective plus noun, is any board that is black, and has equal stress on both elements. The compound blackboard, on the other hand, though it may have started out historically as black board, now is stressed on only the first element, black. Thus a compound such as the white house normally has a falling intonation which a phrase such as a white house does not. Topic. Compound modifiers. English compound modifiers are constructed in a very similar way to the compound noun. Blackboard jungle, leftover ingredients, gunmetal sheen, and green monkey disease are only a few examples. A compound modifier is a sequence of modifiers of a noun that function as a single unit. It consists of two or more words adjectives, gerunds, or nouns of which the left-hand component modifies the right-hand one, as in the dark green dress. Dark modifies the green that modifies dress. Topic. Solid compound modifiers There are some well-established permanent compound modifiers that have become solid over a longer period, especially in American usage ear-splitting, eye-catching, and downtown. However, in British usage, these, apart from downtown, are more likely written with a hyphen ear-splitting, eye-catching. Other solid compound modifiers are for example Numbers that are spelled out and have the suffix fold added. 15-fold, 6-fold. Points of the compass, northwest, northwestern, northwesterly, northwestwards. In British usage, the hyphenated and open versions are more common, northwestern, northwesterly, northwest, northwestwards. Topic: <laughs> Hyphenated compound modifiers. 
Major style guides advise consulting a dictionary to determine whether a compound modifier should be hyphenated. The dictionary's hyphenation should be followed even when the compound modifier follows a noun, that is, regardless of whether in attributive or predicative position, because they are permanent compounds, whereas the general rule with temporary compounds is that hyphens are omitted in the predicative position because they are used only when necessary to prevent misreading, which is usually only in the attributive position, and even there, only on a case by case basis. Generally, a compound modifier modifier is hyphenated if the hyphen helps the reader differentiate a compound modifier from two adjacent modifiers that modify the noun independently. Compare the following examples. Small appliance industry. A small industry producing appliances. Small appliance industry. An industry producing small appliances hyphen is unneeded when capitalization or italicization makes grouping clear. Old English scholar. An old person who is English and a scholar, or an old scholar who studies English. Old English scholar. A scholar of Old English. De facto proceedings. Not de facto. If, however, there is no risk of ambiguities, it may be written without a hyphen. Sunday morning walk. A walk on Sunday morning is practically the same as a morning walk on Sunday. Hyphenated compound modifiers may have been formed originally by an adjective preceding a noun, when this phrase in turn precedes another noun. Round table. Round table discussion. Blue sky. Blue sky law. Red light. Red light district. Four wheels. Four wheel drive. Historically, the singular or root is used, not the plural. Others may have originated with a verb preceding an adjective or adverb. Feel good. Feel good factor. Buy now, pay later. Buy now, pay later purchase. Yet others are created with an original verb preceding a preposition. Stick on. Stick on label. Walk on. Walk on part. Stand by. Stand by fair. Roll on, roll off. Roll on, roll off ferry. The following compound modifiers are always hyphenated when they are not written as one word. An adjective preceding a noun to which d or ed has been added as a past participle construction, used before a noun. Loud mouthed hooligan. Middle aged lady. Rose tinted glasses. A noun, adjective, or adverb preceding a present participle. An awe-inspiring personality. A long-lasting affair. A far-reaching decision. Numbers, whether or not spelled out, that precede a noun. Seven-year itch. Five-sided polygon. Twentieth-century poem. Thirty-piece band. Tenth-story window. A twenty-year-old man, as a compound modifier, and the twenty-year-old, as a compound noun, but a man who is twenty years old. A numeral with the affix fold has a hyphen, fifteenfold, but when spelled out, takes a solid construction, fifteenfold. Numbers, spelled out or not, with added odd, sixteen odd, seventy odd. Compound modifiers with high or low, high-level discussion, low-price markup. Colors in compounds. A dark blue sweater. A reddish orange dress. Fractions as modifiers are hyphenated. Five eighths of an inch. But if numerator or denominator are already hyphenated, the fraction itself does not take a hyphen. A thirty-three thousandth part. Fractions used as nouns have no hyphens. I ate only one third of the pie. Comparatives and superlatives in compound adjectives also take hyphens. The highest placed competitor. A shorter term loan. However, a construction with most is not hyphenated. The most respected member. Compounds including two geographical modifiers. Afro-Cuban. African-American. Sometimes. Anglo-Indian. But not. Central American, which refers to people from a specific geographical region. The following compound modifiers are not normally hyphenated. 
compound modifiers that are not hyphenated in the relevant dictionary or that are unambiguous without a hyphen. Where there is no risk of ambiguity. A Sunday morning walk. Left hand components of a compound modifier that end in lie and that modify right hand components that are past participles ending in ed. A hotly disputed subject. A greatly improved scheme. A distantly related celebrity. Compound modifiers that include comparatives and superlatives with more, most, less or least. A more recent development. The most respected member. A less opportune moment. The least expected event. Ordinarily hyphenated compounds with intensive adverbs in front of adjectives. Very much admired classicist. Really well accepted proposal. Topic: Using a group of compound nouns containing the same head. Special rules apply when multiple compound nouns with the same head are used together, often with a conjunction and with hyphens and commas if they are needed. The third and fourth grade teachers met with the parents. Both full and part-time employees will get raises this year. We don't see many three, four, and five-year-old children around here. Topic: <laughs> Compound verbs. A compound verb is usually composed of an adverb and a verb, although other combinations also exist. The term compound verb was first used in publication in Grattan and Gurry's Our Living Language 1925. Some compound verbs are difficult to analyze morphologically because several derivations are plausible. Blacklist, for instance, might be analyzed as an adjective plus verb compound, or as an adjective plus noun compound that becomes a verb through zero derivation. Most compound verbs originally have the collective meaning of both components, but some of them later gain additional meanings that may supersede the original, emergent sense. Therefore, sometimes the resultant meanings are seemingly barely related to the original contributors. Compound verbs composed of a noun and verb are comparatively rare, and the noun is generally not the direct object of the verb. In English, compounds such as asterisk bread bake or asterisk car drive do not exist. Yet, we find literal action words, such as breastfeed, and washing instructions on clothing as for example hand wash. Hyphenation Compound verbs with single-syllable modifiers are often solid, or unhyphenated. Those with longer modifiers may originally be hyphenated, but as they became established, they became solid, e.g., Overhang, English origin. Counterattack, Latin origin. There was a tendency in the 18th century to use hyphens excessively, that is, to hyphenate all previously established solid compound verbs. American English, however, has diminished the use of hyphens, while British English is more conservative. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Phrasal verbs. English syntax distinguishes between phrasal verbs and adverbial adjuncts. Consider the following sentences. I held up my hand implies that I raised my hand. I held up the negotiations implies that I delayed the negotiations. I held up the bank to the highest standard implies that I demanded model behavior regarding the bank. I held up the bank implies either a, that I robbed the bank or b that I lifted up with a bank either literally, as for a toy bank, or figuratively, as in putting a bank forward as an example of something although usually then the sentence would end with As an exemplar, or similar, each of the foregoing sentences implies a contextually distinguishable meaning of the word up, but the fourth sentence may differ syntactically, depending on whether it intends meaning a or b. Specifically, the first three sentences render held up as a phrasal verb that expresses an idiomatic, figurative, or metaphorical sense that depends on the contextual meaning of the particle, up. The fourth sentence, however, ambiguously renders up either as a, a particle that complements, held, or as b, an adverb that modifies, held. The ambiguity is minimized by rewording and providing more context to the sentences under discussion. I held my hand up implies that I raised my hand. 
I held the negotiations up implies that I delayed the negotiations. I held the bank up to the highest standard implies that I expect model behavior regarding the bank. I held the bank up upstairs implies that I robbed the upstairs bank. I held the bank up the stairs implies that I lifted a toy bank along an upstairs route, thus, the fifth sentence renders up as the head word of an adverbial prepositional phrase that modifies the verb held. The first four sentences remain phrasal verbs. The Oxford English Grammar ISBN distinguishes seven types of phrasal verbs in English. Intransitive phrasal verbs, e.g., given. Transitive phrasal verbs, e.g., find out, discover. Monotransitive prepositional verbs, e.g., look after, care for. Doubly transitive prepositional verbs, e.g., blame something on someone. Copula prepositional verbs, e.g., servers. Monotransitive phrasal prepositional verbs, e.g., look up to, respect. Doubly transitive phrasal prepositional verbs e.g. put something down to someone attribute to English has a number of other kinds of compound verb idioms. There are compound verbs with two verbs e.g. make do. These two can take idiomatic prepositions e.g. get rid of. There are also idiomatic combinations of verb and adjective e.g. come true, run amok and verb and adverb make sure, verb and fixed noun e.g. go ape and these two may have fixed idiomatic prepositions e.g. take place on Topic. Misuses of the term Compound verb is often used in place of complex verb, a type of complex phrase. But this usage is not accepted in linguistics, because compound and complex are not synonymous. Verb phrase or verbal phrase. This is a partially, but not entirely, incorrect use. A phrasal verb can be a one-word verb, of which compound verb is a type. However, many phrasal verbs are multi-word. Phrasal verb A subtype of verb phrase, which have a particle as a word before or after the verb. See also Metaphor Phrasal verb Portmanteau Syllabic abbreviations. Topic Notes. <laughs> <laughs>